Hey guys, uh, this is Dooley. So in this video, we'll talk about how uh, to share data uh, among threads. So in this, there are several ways of doing that. And, and one of the ways of doing that is by giving those threads access to the same instance of a specific object. So what I have here is a very simple uh, class uh, which I call incrementor. Uh, what it does is it has this private member here, which is account. Uh, we can uh, start at uh, user defined uh, account here and then start it right there. And it has a print function that will increment the count and then tell us uh, which thread incremented that count and give us that count. Okay, so it will say, for example, main thread gets count. All right, so let's go ahead and use that and see if the data is being shared. Uh, as you can see here, I've already uh, created an instance of that object when we're starting it at zero. And then I named the main thread. Okay, so let's go ahead and start a thread. We're going to call that function with it and not unlike the previous videos we've seen we are going to also from the main thread call that function and see what happens okay let's uh, let's go ahead and start a thread here we'll start it with that function that's what we want it to do thread that print and we're going to give it a name Okay, and that name is child. Okay, let's call it baby. Baby. All right. Baby, and let's call the main parent. Okay, that's the relationship right there. Okay, now let's start this thread. See that start. Oops. Okay, and let's call that same function from the main thread. Okay, so, oops, so what's happening here, we're giving that thread a function that belongs to that same instance as the one that's being called here by the main thread. So, let's go ahead and call this and see what happens. Okay. Uh -huh. So the baby thread gets two and the parent thread gets one. Now, the again, we still have the same problem we've had before because uh, at this point, we don't know which of the thread is going to have access to the data first and which one of the thread is going to print the data first. So there are two places here where, you know, things can happen out of order. So as we know already we can use join to make sure the child thread finishes before the main thread so what we expect here is for the child thread to get the value one and for the parent thread to get the value two always okay that's what we got here baby thread one parent thread two and always that's what we're gonna get okay so not only that we know we're sharing data because we started this as zero the child thread incremented it to one and the, the parent thread after that took it and then incremented it to two okay what would make this more apparent is if for example we had a bunch of threads all right a bunch of threads let's create a list okay list a new list of threads and then we're going to fill it with uh, let's say three threads all right new thread and we're going to start it with that same function okay and we're going to give him names as well okay the name we want is 
baby one. Hmm? How about that? Okay, now let's just copy this and get a couple more. A couple more threads here. Now let's just change the name of these babies. Okay. All right, so we have three threads here. So we can go ahead and for each of them, T in threads, for each of them, we're going to print, uh, we're going to call them, we're going to start them, T dot start. Okay. And we could do the same for the main, for the main thread. Okay, so same idea here. We are going to print it for each of these. So there are three children here. So we're expecting this thing to be incremented six times. Uh, one for each of the children. And in this for loop, uh, uh, the main thread is going to print three times. So we're expecting six incrementations. All right. Okay, yeah, we got six incrementations. And as you can see, the order here, you know, it's it's weird order. And also, we're getting numbers twice. We didn't get three. So, weird stuff is going on here. Right? Okay, so, again, as we already know, t.join can solve this problem by making sure whenever this for loop is entered the child thread is going to finish before the main thread go it go goes ahead and, and and try to print okay so let's do that six incrementations and now they are happening in order and this idea is is not a new one you can imagine creating a for loop uh, and and you know, like let's say fifty times, and creating fifty threads, adding them to some list, and then from that list you have the threads do something for you. Okay, so you can see you know how powerful you can get. You know with parallel programming, you you're able to do a lot of things. And and you know this is how you share data uh, between threads. That's one of the ways. Uh, anyways. Um, and the way you do it is by giving those threads access uh, to an instance of an object. And the data that lives within that object uh, can be modified, can be read, and can be, you know, you can do whatever, uh, uh, you know, you're allowed to do in the language. All right, guys, so this was uh, this tutorial. Uh, go ahead and subscribe if you want to know when the next video is coming up. Um, like the videos if you want to and 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 let me know if you have any questions all right i'll see you next time